How's it going? Fox back again for sound design tutorials. Something totally different today. Um, I've been messing around with Ableton Simpler, um, chopping up a vocal, not chopping it up, just using a vocal stab to make a sort of trap lead. It's as close as what I could find, something that would fit it when I'd finished making it. Anywho, this is it. Up, 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 up. Yeah, there you go. Um, so before we get started, I'll just say if you enjoy this or any of my videos, please subscribe. There's a button up here. Check me out on Facebook and Google Plus if you have any requests. Yeah. So what did I do? Um, the drums I made afterwards. We'll turn them off for now. Um, we'll have a quick look at it and then I'll go through it. Uh, it's just got a ping pong delay, a bit of compression to bring the delay out, and then a convolution reverb, which is a Max for Live device. You don't have to use this. The uh, Cathedral Reverb preset is pretty good. Obviously not as good as a Convolution Reverb. But what I would do is I'm going to create another MIDI track. I'm going to load a simpler onto it. Uh, I'm just going to show you how I did it. Uh, not going to do it exactly. It will probably turn out a little bit different. But at least you'll get to grips with uh, how I did it. Um, so yeah, pretty much just went into my, some vocals that I've got uh, in, a, in an old drum and bass folder and I found this one. Ah, uh, yeah, it's called. So yeah, if we drop that onto an audio track. If I add an audio track, it would be helpful. I mean, you can chop it up first if you want, but it's easy enough just to drag it straight into Simpler and you can choose the length of the sample that's playing inside Simpler. So that's pretty much all I did. I dragged it into Ableton, consolidated it in case there was anything funky going on. Um, turn the warp mode off. And then drag it into Simpler. So open your Simpler track. You can drag it from anywhere. You can drag a sample straight from your browser or you can drag one from already from your project that you've got into Simpler. Bang, it's in there ready for you to play. So, we solo that channel now. Good thing to do is to remember to take the warp mode off of the sample. Samples are automatically warped inside Ableton and if that's the case, then, uh, it is automatically set to beat mode. It can add some, make it grainy or anything like that. Bearing in mind, once you load it into Simpler, you can then change the warp mode inside that. It is at the bottom here. You've got beats, texture, repitch, complex, right? All the all of the warp modes that you get inside a sampler. So make sure you consolidate it, make sure it's unwarped so it's as clean as you can get it when it's inside simpler. I mean you could just play that over. Keep it on uh, classic mode, which means however long you hold the note down, it's gonna play that much of the sample for. Short stabs, just gonna play a short amount. Hold it down for longer, it's going to play a longer amount. Now what I like to do is um, I change it to a one shot. That means when you click it, it's going to play the whole sample through. And then we can trim the length. Somewhat a lot shorter, which is what I wanted, um, because these were quite short stabs that I made inside there. If I drag this MIDI down onto it, actually, I think that's a nice. Uh, little loop we've got going there to to be able to do what we wanted to do. One thing I am going to do is I'm going to transpose it up an octave so it sounds like it was in the other one. So yeah, then you can go into the controls. You've got a lot more control over the sound. You've got a pitch envelope. You've got an amplitude envelope. Um, I believe we are on the amplitude envelope to start with. <coughs> 
amplitude, pitch, frequency, envelope. Yeah, that's your filter. Amplitude, envelope. Let's go back to the sample, actually. You can give it more vo as a way you can give it more voices. Must be in classic mode. Yeah, so in classic mode you can give it some more voices. Just helps thicken the sound up. Um, it's got a built-in filter. If you wanted to dull it down. Um, one thing you then do in the control section is you can apply some filter envelope. Um, this clean filter is a state variable filter. You can see the higher you go with a frequency, the steeper the slope. The lower you go with a frequency, the lesser the slope. It's very clever. Um, <clears throat> a lot of filters are doing this nowadays inside synths. So yeah, we can apply an envelope to this filter to create even more of a plucky sound. If we click on the envelope, give an envelope amount, want it positive. Play with the decay a bit. That's sounding good. So if we go to the amplitude envelope now, we're going to create another sort of pluck just to trim any of the unwanted bits off that we want. Pitch envelope's not having any effect, which is good. We don't want that. Give it some resonance, which it just accentuates the gain at the cutoff point. We go back to the sample then. That's pretty much all I did. I mean, it sounds a bit boring at the minute. And then all I did then was in audio effects, I added a ping pong delay. It was sort of a triplet melody that I played, so if I remember correctly, it was on three. No, I had it on two. Oh, well, we'll leave it on three for now, just to say you can make it do it however you want. So, yeah, what really made this then was the compressor to bring out the delays. And then if you've got Ableton Live 9 Suite like me, you've got uh, <clears throat> a whole range of other effects that you can use. Convolution Reverb being the best one in there by a mile, and I chose a large plate. Drag it, dropped it in. This is what totally transformed the sound. Drop the compressor after the reverb, it accentuates the reverb tail and makes it even brighter. You always want the reverb after, after the delay as well, because it then reverbs a delayed signal as well. Drop an EQ8 in. <coughs> Do a bit of mid side quickly just to boost the side, which is going to be the delay and the reverb signal. I've got a little bit more filter envelope on that last one, so if we pull the frequency down even more.
There you go. Easy peasy, really. You can almost use any vocal for this. Now, if this was me doing this, I would control shift T, make another layer. Uh, I would layer it just with a basic saw wave pluck. Had a basic pluck there. If we group the ping pong convolution reverb compressor and the EQ, if we copy this and then drop it on the serum track. <laughs> Add some pitch envelope on this as well. If we use envelope three on the course pitch, go to the matrix section and envelope three on the course pitch of this as well. Just make sure it's going one way, pitch it up by an octave ish. We make a really woody, knocky sort of pluck. That is going to be perfect to be layered with this. If we join the two together. Drop a glue compressor on there. There you have it, vocal sample to trap pluck mixed in with a serum pluck. Sounds really cool, very easy to do, so I just drag it into simpler, draw your MIDI notes out, add a massive reverb and a ping pong delay, job done. Okay, hope you learned something. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you did enjoy this. Cheers.